we're back out on the bass buggy, and today we're talking about making your own custom baits at home. Stick around, you don't want to miss this one. There we go, I'm on. He hit it pretty good too. Welcome back to Low Bra Fishing, and today we're talking about making your own baits at home. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, then you know that I like to make my own soft plastic baits and jigs. And several of you have reached out to me and asked about it. So today I'm doing an in-depth video of the steps and process that I use in making soft plastics. We'll be making stick baits, open pour worms, and some craws. And then when we're done with that, we're going to take them out to the lake and use them, which is the best part. So sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. This right here, this is the essentials you will need to begin making your own soft plastics. First up, you're going to need the liquid plastic. Uh, you're going to need the liquid plastic making material itself. It's called Plastisol. This is a one-gallon jug. It'll run you about fifty dollars for that one-gallon jug. But don't worry, you will get many, many, many bags of plastics out of that. This is the glitter. Uh, several different types of glitter. In case, if you want to add it, that's a great thing to have. I have several measuring devices. I've got a measuring cup, an old measuring cup. You will ruin these, so don't use your wife's good ones. She will get mad. I use these for measuring the amounts of salt and or glitter that I'm putting in the plastics. This plastic one here is for measuring out the amount of plastisol that I'm putting into any batch. And the reason I do that is, is because it's like baking. It's a pretty exact science. You want to remember your recipes, otherwise even the slightest variation can change the entire consistency of the batch and it'll come out differently. These are the dyes. You're going to need these obviously to make the different colors of plastics that you want. Now these colors here obviously you can mix them. I put red and blue together and I can make a purple. Add a little bit of black to that, boom you got June bug. And these right here, these are the molds themselves. This right here is a craw mold. Let's see if I can get this open for you here and you can see that right there is a cross type mold it makes an excellent cross style bait for either a uh, for either a, a trailer or a Texas rig this here this is the star of the show this is the Senko this is a five inch Senko it actually says if I can turn it around here we can see it it actually says Yamamoto five inch Yamamoto five inch Senko on there um, now, if you are selling your plastic baits, you cannot use that term Yamamoto Senko because, well, Gary Yamamoto owns that copyright and he will sue you. Rightfully so. Okay, here's a silicone mold for doing open pour molds. Uh, it's a larger worm. I like using these. This is great. And this, of course, is the injector. This is what you will be using to suck the hot melted plastic from here and injecting it in that port in there. What I forgot to put out here is a pair of good sturdy gloves. You will need that. And before I forget, obviously you're going to need something, a device or apparatus of some sort to put a good amount of clamp on those molds because they don't seat together as tight as you want to. And if you don't have some sort of uh, clamping mechanism, it will ooze out and you'll have a whole bunch of flashing and nobody likes that and that little board in the back that's my garbage board things will happen you'll make trash and you're going to need a place to put it because it is hot and you don't want to be burning yourself and or the surrounding environment that you're using so but that right there that is the basics of what you're going to need for making soft plastic baits now you can get crazy with multiple injectors and and, and different kinds of colors and all these sorts of things but this right here if you just want to make the stuff that you're seeing in the store, replicate that or come up with your own colors and combinations, this is the way to do it. Now, another thing that I didn't put out here is salt. And you can buy salt to put into your soft plastics, or you can make your own. It's not that hard. Um, regular sea salt will work. Kosher salt will work. The problem is, is you have to grind it up almost into a fine powder. Otherwise, it all sinks to the bottom of the mixture. So you want it to suspend in that mixture, so you got to grind it up and make it finer. So anyway, let's move on to the next phase, which is actually mixing, uh, mixing up some plastisol and making some baits. All right, let's go ahead and get that going. Um, I have this rod holder here, and I'm going to be using the tip of it as my stirring. Now, you don't want something flat, because that will 
inject a lot of air into that mixture and if you don't have a degassing chamber a fancy pump to hook to a chamber that pulls all the air bubbles out then you're just going to have a whole bunch of bubbles so you want something round so we're going to add one full cup of that liquid put the cap back on and we're going to be making sort of a purplish color today so and I have this is blue glitter and I'm going to be taking one amount this is called a tad but this is an even measurement me measurement for me and then I'm going to be dumping one of those in a little dab will do you you don't need to go crazy with the amount otherwise you will uh, well, you'll, you'll kind of regret it. And there's red, so we're going to put a little bit of red glitter in there. You want to make sure your spoon's as clean as possible. You're not trying to mix the glitters up, if you can help it. So, and then we're going to take, give that a good shake. And we want one, two, two squirts of that. And then we're going to take the red, and we'll do equal parts of that. So if I can get the cap off of it one two all right now we want it just to be a little bit dark so we're going to take the black and just a little dab just a few little drops of black we don't want a whole bunch because black will take it over and then we will mix that up it almost looks uh red white and bluey doesn't it america all right and that's a very good june bug looking color right there and that's kind of what we're after is a june bug sort of color now we have to go and uh, now we have to go heat this mixture up in the microwave and when I get it all heated up uh, I will walk you through that process and then we'll start making plastic molds I put that on for about two minutes and I will check it periodically to stir it um, it will thicken up as it gets in the microwave now you want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area you don't want to be doing this in some place because this stuff will start to smoke if you scorch it, it, scorch ra it scorches rather easily um, and it will smoke up the place and it will stink for days. Made that mistake. But anyway, uh, when that timer goes off, this is the initial melt. When that timer goes off, I will then take it out, mix it up, and then probably cook it for another minute or two until I get the consistency that I want. But I will be checking it after every 30 seconds to a minute to make sure that I'm not scorching it because it will scorch rather easily and once it does that the mixture is not any good and you have to go back to uh, you have to go back to the beginning and start over now before I actually start pouring or injecting the salt rather I'm going to or before I start actually injecting the uh, soft plastic I'm going to go ahead and add my salt content and I want about three level scoops of my salt that I just used a regular mortar and pestle to grind it works great and we had a little more salt in that we want to we want some heavily salted baits this time around okay now we'll go ahead and work that in went out and bought a brand new boat yesterday if you are interested in seeing me reveal the boat and do a boat reveal, then smash that like button and comment below. Say, hey man, I'm going to see that new boat. And I will do a reveal video on my new boat. I was looking at it for several months before I decided to pull the trigger and just buy the thing. Again, I'm not replacing the good old bass buggy. The bass buggy, that's my pride and joy. I'm never getting rid of that thing. I've had people ask me to sell it and I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm not selling the bass buggy. So that bass buggy is not only is it a fish catching machine, it is near and dear to my heart. But I did want something to augment my boat fishing adventures so I went out and bought one I got to go pick it up today 
Okay, as you can see, we've got our workstation ready to inject some plastics. Um, I'm definitely going to be putting my gloves on because you will burn yourself silly working with hot molten plastic. Now, I've got my plastics all mixed up and we've got a really nice June bug color that I'm really looking forward to using. I've added some salt to that. Uh, I'm going to take our injector. Well, actually, first of all, you can see that I've gone ahead and clamped up those molds so we don't get any seepage. I'm going to stick my injector down in there pretty far, draw it all the way up, squirt out just a little bit in case I get any air bubbles. And we're going to go ahead and stick this in here, give it a nice good shove, make sure the mold is full to the top, and then we're going to move on to the crawl, and then we're going to do the same thing there. Make sure we got it full to the top. All right, we're going to give that just a few seconds to cool. We're going to push out any excess. Make sure that we get all of that out. And then pop that apart. After every injection, I like to clean up uh, the gear. So I'm using a fresh slate every single time. But we're going to give that just a few seconds to cool. And then we will open those molds up and see what we have. But those felt like they poured pretty good. So we'll be back in just a minute. Oh, and here's another little tip. Whenever you're cleaning your thing, uh, whenever you're cleaning your injectors up, put that to the side on your workspace. It, it, sh it should come up pretty easily. Uh, usually this stuff just peels right off of most surfaces. If it's a smooth, like here I'm using glass, uh, if it's a wooden surface, you may have a little bit more problem. Something for the soft plastic to seep into and get a bite. But this here, I don't have a problem. It just peels right off. But anyway, I don't put it back in. I put it to the side because I'm going to use some more of that. All right, let's open this up and see. This is the Yamamoto Senko. Oh yeah, those poured beautifully. Look at that. Look at how gorgeous those turned out. Look how absolutely beautiful those are. Oh yeah. Those are definitely going to be fishable. Those are definitely going to catch fish. Now, let's go ahead and take a look and see what the... Oops, let's get that off of there. I don't want to have to peel that apart later. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what the craw did. Oh, yeah. And as you can see, that craw turned out really nice, too. And these things, they've got quite a bit of flap under the water. They've got kind of a narrow profile. There is no up and down. It's both the same. But look at that. That is beautiful. We are definitely going to be able to fish those. Those, are going, those turned out great. Okay. Now, since those turned out and I have just enough time left, since those turned out and I have just enough time left, let's go ahead and do an open pour mold. And these, you have to have your broad knife with you, and I'll show you why in just a second, because open pour mold, um, I don't know about anybody else who does it, but for me, it is exceptionally messy. I have to do that, and then I have to take my broad knife while it's still real hot and make a swipe across the top there. See how I did that? And that will be much easier to peel that little plastic in between. And if I, even if I wanted to, I could actually do another one, another light little glaze over the top. Let that fill in, fill in a little bit, and then flip my blade over, make sure I'm not... And then do another little swipe like that. And that'll pretty much all even out. So. And you'll see those when we get done. It looks kind of nasty and gnarly right now, but actually they turn out really nice when we get done. So there you have it. That's the basics of making your own soft plastics. You have your pour, uh, open pour molds. You have your injection molds and all the tools you need to go with it. You see how everything how those turned out absolutely marvelously. We'll clip this part off and we will put that back in as remelt. Uh, and you can let that plastic harden and you can remelt it as many times as you need. You're going to have to be gentle with it though. 
because as I said before, this stuff does scorch easily. So you have to be careful when you're remelting it. Anyway, I hope that was helpful to you. And I hope it's something you can use. I hope there's tricks that you can make. Now, next time, um, I'll show you how I make my own uh, Archie jigs and my own chatterbaits because that's a really interesting process as well. Okay, this is the fun part of making the plastics. Now, we get to fish with them. So, I'm going to start out with this. I got my Senko here, my stick bait. And we're going to use that. I have a Texas rig here with a 4 out hook and a 1 8 ounce bullet weight. So we're going to go with that. Oops, if I can get my stuff right. Make a few casts. But it's always very satisfying when you catch fish on things that you made, on something you made yourself. So, Texas rig that dude up. Oops. There we are. A peanut butter and jelly colored uh, Senko. It is hot out here today, kids. I'm telling you what. It is really hot out here today. It's probably close to 100 degrees out here. There we go, I'm on. He hit it pretty good too. And there you go, that's the satisfaction of catching a fish with your own stuff. And that didn't take long at all. Alright. Right in the top of the lip, just like you like to see. That's a nice fish right there. Probably about a pound and a half. He's pretty good sized. Beautiful. Don't you just love it when a plan comes together and you're catching stuff on baits that you made? There's something that's just so satisfying about that. Alright, we're going to get a turn around to the sun. Get a selfie. All right. Beautiful fish. Pretty fish. Pound and a half. Thank you, little buddy. There he goes. There you have it. It's really not that hard. The biggest part is the setup fee. And that can be quite expensive. That can be a couple of hundred dollars even for the most basic things. Mainly for the injector, which can cost about $55, and the plastisol, which again, a gallon can run you about $55, $60. But once you get that out of the way, you really can make a whole bunch of plastic baits. In fact, I tend to go crazy with it, and my wife tells me if I don't do something with them, she's going to throw them out. But it's just so much fun to make. And it's great to see what kind of colors and combinations I can come with. And then get out on the water and fish with them. It's just such an exciting thing. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into my world of bait making. And I hope you come back and join us soon. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.